Hey folks, thanks for coming back. If it's your first time here, thanks for visiting. So today is episode seven of my antique tools series. Uh, as you can see, I've got nothing on the bench as I've done in the past. There's nothing on the bench today. And that's because today's topic is just too big to put up on the bench. So I'll bring you over to the other side of the barn and I'll show you what I have. So here it is. This is a Craftsman Model 113 8 inch tilting arbor table saw. They started manufacturing these in 1954 and they ran till about 1966. These were made by Emerson Electronic or Emerson Electric for Sears Roebuck Company. I don't know the manufacture date for this table saw, I think there are, um, the date for the manufacturer might be on the bottom side of the table. Uh, in my research, I saw some that had a manufacture date up on the bottom side, but it's just too dirty right now. There's a lot of sawdust under there, um, so I can't even read the date. Uh, I will be pulling this all apart first chance I get and cleaning it all up. You can see the uh, table here. This is cast iron and it's really rusted from sitting out here in the barn. A lot of my tools uh, stored out here in the barn got rusty as you can see from some of my prior um, episodes. A lot of the tools got rusty and most of that was from before I restored the barn. So you see the concrete slab here. Uh, before I restored the barn, the original wooden floor was in here, and that was on dirt. So a lot of moisture just came up through the ground. Uh, <laughs> kind of got everything rusty. So I think if I clean this up, it'll be okay in the future. So at some point, I'm just going to tear it all apart and more or less restore it. At least clean it all up. So as I said, it's an 8-inch saw blade. This is the rip fence that came with the table saw. That's the um, miter guide. Uh, it's also got the rip fence guide here. I never use this. It's too hard to see. Uh, it's too hard to line everything up with the, uh, the window here. It's too hard to line everything up on the guide. Part of the problem is you can see this is oxidized so it's hard to see the numbers in the guide here. So I just use, so what that does is that tells you how far the rip fence is from the blade. So I just use the tape measure to do that. That's what I've always done. That gives me the distance that I need. So I got this uh, table saw from my father-in-law. I imagine he bought it new. I don't know for sure, but I imagine he bought it new. Um, I would think this was probably made in the 60s and he probably bought it new. I inherited it from him uh, around 1985. He passed away and I got some of his tools and I got this from him. So, and let me put this here. I'm trying to hang that back up on my belt. <clears throat> um, so I did print out a new operating manual. I printed this out yesterday. There are times when modern technology is just fantastic. So I found this online somewhere on some website uh, and printed it out. I think I have the original uh, instruction manual that came with the table saw. It's put away somewhere with a bunch of other owner's manuals for other uh, tools and appliances that we have and put them all somewhere together and I couldn't find it last night. So anyway, I've got another one right there if I need it. Now uh, it does have all the it's got the instructions plus the 
um, exploded view somewhere in here of all the parts. And another thing I did last night is you can see here the knob here to adjust the uh, table angle is missing. And then same thing here. The knob is missing on here, and this adjusts, I believe this one adjusts the uh, saw blade height, and I think this one is the uh, table angle that, for the tilt. Now, I don't know where those knobs went. They were on the table saw. The table saw has been in this barn for 25 years, and they just disappeared. So, you know, where could they go? <laughs> I don't think anybody came in and stole them. So I would just come in one day and they'd be gone. And you know, I'd look around in the barn and couldn't find them. So I'll show you underneath all the mechanisms. Everything's covered again with uh, sawdust. And I would normally go through this every once in a while and clean it all out. And it's been a while just because I've been busy with so many other projects and I haven't really used this much in the last several years. So I've got to get in here, clean this all up. But up in here somewhere, up in there somewhere in the bottom of the table, this should be a manufacturing date. Maybe under all that sawdust in there. Uh, so I might take this back. I think this adjusts the, the blade height. You can see it going up to the blade there. So I think that adjusts the blade height. And then that there. And then that one on the side of the table, that must adjust the tilt of the table. So let's start it up. So it's, uh, what, about 60 years old, still runs good, and once I clean it all up, it'll run better. I do have a brand new belt on it. Uh, the previous belt, which I think is the original belt, broke uh, last time I used it, so I did put this belt on it. So as I said, it's been a while since I've run this table saw. I did use it for some work on a house, our first house that I worked on. Needed a lot of structural repairs, so I was using this uh, quite a bit in, in those projects. So I had six areas of the house where the uh, sills and the walls were rotted out. So I used this uh, for different tasks in, in those uh, repair pr projects. I do have a couple of photos, and I'll show you some of the photos on some of the repairs I did on our first house. So we'll go back over to the bench. So we'll start right here. <laughs> so um, I thought that I had started this project. This was the back wall on my first house. I, th I thought I had started this around 1985 or 86, but there's a handwritten note on, back of, on the back of one of these photos. It says June of 89. Um, and then my wife reminded me today that that's, probably correct uh, because she was having issues with her gallbladder I think at the time <clears throat> and she was sleeping this was our son's bedroom but she was sleeping in there during the day instead of going upstairs to our bedroom so I was trying to do this project and I get out there and I'd start hammering away and sawing and making a lot of noise and then she'd say I want to go in and take a nap so I'd shut everything down, she'd take her nap for a couple of hours and get up, then I'd come back out, start everything back up again. So this project actually took me, uh, it was about four months to do. Um, so what happened was I had noticed that some of the shingles right here in between these windows, some of the shingles were loose. So it was a Saturday, 
I was doing something, noticed they were loose. So my wife went out to do grocery shopping. I said, okay, well, I'm going to look at these shingles and see why they're loose. And I started tearing into it, and I found that the sheathing was all rotted back there. Um, so I kept working my way around, found all this all rotted out here. So I tore this, I tore this all open. And so what had happened is the house was originally built with wooden gutters on the house and they're built right into the wall so whenever they backed up when they were they got plugged up they'd back up and run into the wall run down inside the wall and rot everything out so i ripped that all open and i thought yeah i've got a bit of a project here so i sat down in a lawn chair and had a cold drink cold glass of water or something in my hand i'm sitting in the lawn chair looking at the wall my wife came home walked around behind the house <laughs> He says, what are you doing? Saw me looking at the house. He says, what are you doing? I said, well, trying to figure out what to do with this. So she walked around a little further, saw the wall all ripped open, and went, ah, what did you do? <laughs> so I said, well, it's all rotted out, and i got to figure out how I'm going to fix this. So that's uh, one shot of before I really fixed anything. So the sills down here were all rotted out. The ribbon joist was all rotted out. Um, so I'll get back to that in a minute. So that's what I did. Put in a new, uh, I think that was a pressure treated sill. If I remember correctly, put in a pressure treated sill down there. And then sistered in these new studs because the other ones were all rotted along the outer edge. Um, so I replaced all those. And then the um, the window sill, sill here was all rotted out. I kept the rest of the frame and I kept the sashes, but that sill was rotted out. And that was, this is old lumber. This house was built in 1939. So that was the old dimensional lumber. Um, and I couldn't find a piece of lumber with the right dimensions, the right thickness to use as a sill. And that delayed the project for probably you now a month or two, just trying to find that proper size lumber. And I, I looked all over the place. Um, and then one day, our neighbor... She was an elderly woman at the time. She wanted her car pulled into the her garage or pulled out of the garage. I forget what it was. So she asked me to do it because she had a tendency to hit the doorway with her car. <clears throat> so I went in and pulled the car in or pulled the car out or whatever it was. And I noticed a piece of lumber sitting on the garage floor. And it looked like the right dimension. So I got my, uh, I don't know, got my tape measure or something and measured it and said, ha, that's the perfect size lumber. So I asked her if I could have it, and she gave it to me. So uh, this, the, the table saw that you just saw came in real handy for doing this, this sill here. It's hard to see, but you know it's stepped up. There's a step in the sill right there. Uh, and, I, and I did some other work. I think I put in a little oh, dado, whatever, down, or rabbit down along the bottom here for, for uh, water dripping off. I think you can see it right about there. Uh, and I didn't have a dado bit for the table saw. So I used that tilting table to cut everything at the right angle um, that I needed. And then for this step here, I just kept running the uh, blade back and forth across that, that board and adjusting the uh, rip fence. I just moved the rip fence in a little bit, uh, cut a little more and kept doing that till, uh, till till I got the... Got what I needed. And then uh, I finished it off with a sander and uh, uh, some other tools. So that's how I made that sill. That's the, uh, I think I showed you that one already. All the new lumber in place. There's the finished project without the paint. Um, and then while I had it all open, you can see that there was just a window there with a well. And I wanted access to the 
basement. The only access we had was through the house. And that was actually through an old closet. And it was a narrow, very narrow doorway. So to get anything large down into the basement or out of the basement, we had to tear the whole door frame apart. Uh, so I wanted a bulkhead and direct access to the basement. So while I had that wall all ripped open, I rented a concrete saw and cut the concrete foundation out, put a door in, poured that concrete there, that you see right there, and then put that, put that uh, bulkhead on it. There's me just before I backfilled around that that uh, bulkhead foundation. Well, folks, thanks for stopping by and watching episode seven, my Sears Craftsman table saw. I appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.